So we're going to look at the proof of the chain rule. The chain rule is what we use to take the derivative of a composite function. And a composite function is when a function is embedded inside of another function. So one example of that that we've used in class is y equals sine of x squared. Okay? Um, and to be uh, totally specific, we can put those parentheses in there that x squared is inside the sine, right? Um, and I might clean up that x a little bit. Um, so what we can do is uh, define that inside function, the x squared, to be a new function. We can call it u and just say u equals x squared. Okay? And then the function becomes, the, that composite function becomes sine of u. Okay? So <clears throat> we have uh, the derivative, we, we have y right, as a function of x. Okay? And we have u as a function of x, and we have y as a function of u, right? And we can, what we want really is to take the derivative of y, the original function. We want the derivative of this function, right? The derivative of y with respect to x. In other words, we want dy dx, right? Um, which you see over there on the left at the top. Um, but it's easy to find uh, du dx, right? And it's also easy to find dy du, right? The derivative of y with respect to u, or the derivative of u with respect to x. Um, du dx is just uh, 2x, right? And dy du is just cosine of u. We just take the derivatives of those functions. So what we want to do is, put the, is make it so that uh, dy dx can be written in terms of those other derivatives in terms of du dx and dy du, because those are easy to find. So what we have is we have those three um, derivatives um, all up here defined using the definition of derivative. Right? Um, the, basically, you know, this is your standard definition of derivative with, with in this sort of format. The limit as delta x approaches 0 of delta y over delta x. Okay, And then it's been formatted to sort of fit the correct variables for these other derivatives that we were talking about. So what we want to, what we want to do, we're going to take this derivative, this definition right here, this first one on the left, and try to put it, uh, try to edit it and change it around so that it looks like the other definitions so that we can um, write that derivative of y with respect to x in terms of these other derivatives. Okay? So what we see here is if you look at these other derivatives, they have delta u. Each one has delta u in one place or another, right? And our first derivative doesn't have that. So what we do is we multiply both sides. I'm sorry, we, we multiply the one side. We multiply the, the definition by delta u over delta u. It doesn't change anything because delta u over delta u is 1. Um, and it gets that delta u in there. And we just have to rearrange it and get it where we want it. Okay, so then what we do is we take these, um, the denominators, because we're multiplying fractions here, and really this could all be inside parentheses um, if, we, uh, if we wanted to be real thorough here, because um, those are all inside the limit. We're multiplying fractions here, and when we're multiplying fractions, it doesn't matter what order you multiply the parts. Um, and so in this next step, we're going to switch the order, right? What was delta x and delta u? being multiplied then becomes delta u and delta x being multiplied, which doesn't change anything because it doesn't matter what order you multiply things in. Right? And now you can see we have here um, delta y over delta u, which is what we have right here, right? And delta u over delta x, which is what we have over here. So now we just need to separate those so we can use the limit, uh, the limit of a product theorem and split that up into two different limits, right? which is pretty simple limit theorems. And then the only thing that we already have one of the derivatives that we're looking for, right? Um, we already have the derivative of u with respect to x, right? That's right there. It's, it's, we found it, right? We've gotten it. The only thing that we need to change is this delta x right here because what we really want for the derivative of y with respect to u is a delta u approaching zero. Um, and what that, the way that we sort of, um, justify 
changing that because you can see here, it just changes to delta u. Um, and that's the only change there. The reason we can do that is because we're talking about a function um, of u with respect to x. So we have you know, an x-axis and a u-axis, and it's some function like this, right? And we have an x value, and then we have delta, u, uh, delta x right here, right? And this goes over and gives us some delta u right there, right? And as delta x goes to 0, as that line approaches the other one, delta u um, is also going to approach 0. So we can say that, you know, if delta x is approaching 0, then delta u is approaching 0. So the limit as x approaches 0 is equal to the limit as delta u approaches 0. And now we have exactly what we want. We, you know, this um, formula right here, as it says up here, is um, dy du. So we plug that in there, right? My arrows aren't working very well here. And then this right there is the derivative of u with respect to x. And so we get that as well. Okay, and that proves the chain rule.